Now let's look at these two streams. Again, in the pure Antioch stream, you, you start with the old Syriac, old Latin, around 400 AD, the Gothic Bible was translated um, by Ulfius, I believe was his name. And then you have the Armenian, the Ethiopic, and the Georgian Bibles uh, coming in that order. And then the Slavonic Bible, I think, was around the 9th century. They actually created a language in order to translate a Bible for the people to read. And that's a fascinating story as well. And if you notice, I've got up here unknown number of foreign Bibles through the centuries. One of the most disgusting things being taught in Christian schools today is number one that uh, these are only a handful of Bibles that exist uh, that were given to us from the traditional text and they downplay the number of translations that came from the true stream. The fact is that during that period of time where you have the Old Syriac, the Old Latin, the Gothic, Armenian, Ethiopic, Georgian, Slavonic, there were horrible persecutions. At first it came from pagan Rome, and then it came from the Holy Roman Empire and the popes. The persecution included burning their churches, burning their books, and burning the people. The people would be tortured until they would confess uh, or give up uh, the location of their Bibles and their literature. And today's Christian educated idiots in our seminaries and colleges, they pretend that the writings that we now possess somehow represent what really was written back in that time. The fact of the matter is we don't know how many foreign languages had Bibles and then the scholar sits around and pretends that by counting the number of quotations from this area and that area and the church fathers and that sort of thing that they can somehow grade the Bible and decide which uh, Bible verses to keep in it and which to cast out. What they are doing is rewarding Satan. Satan attacked Christians, killed them, burned their churches, burned their Bibles and that's the only reason we don't have those texts and the scholars know this, but they've lacked all common sense and they continue to teach that we should go by the extant manuscripts alone, pretending that all these other things didn't happen and that they don't, the other writings don't exist. But well, we take into consideration the reality Satan has used the Pope, the Roman Church, and other governments under the control of Rome to burn Bibles and kill Christians throughout the ages. And now that gives us the background we need to understand where the King James Bible came from and where these new translations come from. The King James Bible has this history behind it. And then from that pure stream, Erasmus gave us a Greek New Testament. People will falsely claim that Erasmus just didn't know about Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. The fact is we have writings, letters written to him that prove that he knew about them and he rejected the readings. He only used a handful of manuscripts because he recognized those, in his opinion, as being pure manuscripts. And based on those handful of manuscripts that he felt were the purest, then he came up with the, his version of the Greek New Testament. And from that Greek New Testament and the Masoretic Hebrew text, Luther gave the German world a Bible. And I believe that was around 1560. And... Uh, that set Germany on fire with the gospel 
And then the Roman Catholic Church had not allowed for a Bible in anything other than Latin throughout the Dark Ages. That's why the Dark Ages were the Dark Ages. You, you study it, you'll find out that Origen and Augustine and Jerome and the popes were the, uh, basically the reason there was a Dark Ages.